Story 1. D-Day Anniversary. Well, tonight in about three more hours will be my 29th year that I caught my wife sneaking into our home and it happened on her birthday. I don't know what she was thinking. Did she not realize I would be waiting for her to get home to celebrate? I guess that tells you how much they care about their BP when they're out getting effed by someone else. Anyway, after that I told her to leave, she didn't want to think she could just go in and fall asleep. Well, we ended up in an argument because I came back, and she was on the phone and hung up when she saw me. I asked who it was she said it was her mom, which I figured was bull SHT, so I told her to call her back I needed to talk to her that I owed her mom some money which I did owe. She wouldn't so I grabbed the phone back then it was a landline she chased me through the house trying to get it out of my hand so I ended up throwing it but she tried to tackle me it ended up going through the living room window and broke it well my neighbor was out shoveling snow herd and called the cops so then the cops show up put me in handcuffs takes me to the car asking what happened I told him exactly what happened and I don't want her in the house I wanted her to leave he says well see I asked him if he was married he said yeah well you be pissed off he tells me oh yeah I would then a young cop walks over and says he will take me to metro the older one says we'll take care of it so he says you're a really lucky guy tonight i'm supposed to take you to jail but i'm not going to let's go inside i'm walking up he asks if i have anything to fix the window i did plywood in my garage we walk i she won't tell them where our car is because i'm standing there so anyway the cop takes her out he comes back in and says my partner is taking her to get the car she didn't want to tell you where it was so that get back she walking to the bedroom i said where the fk you think you're going to bed i tired well it's not going to be in that bed the cop stops her and tells me her she has five minutes to pack what she needs and not six minutes she started flipping out on me i say go ahead it can't hurt me any worse than you have already i that was pretty much the last time she stepped on that house i sold it seven months later i just wanted her out so every year since i've been kind of asshole and send her a message on fb book always the same words for whatever it's worth happy birthday did it already tonight reader comment pretty effed up memory it's been 32 why for me never caught her in the act she just confessed when she asked for a d other than a couple conversations at that time i've managed to get as close as possible to zero contact zero conversations which was hard since we had a three y daughter at that time but pretty damn close i knew she wanted us to stay friends but i wanted no part of that Original poster, good for you she can't and doesn't deserve to be friends with you. Reader comment, cheaters are deeply flawed selfish individuals and you can see that in their behavior. She clearly only cared about her comfort and security so instead of leaving she called her boy toy probably to tell him that you know. And you see if he could pick her up and let her stay with him. He probably distanced himself from her then and she started the drama instead of just leaving. But clearly that backfired on her which was very lucky on your part because you could have gone to jail on top of the trauma she inflicted on you that night. Story 2. My experience with infidelity and my own emotional driven mistakes. I feel the need to preface this with a disclaimer that I've spent most of my adult life alone. I've always struggled with dating and courtship. I've only had two serious relationships, neither of which have lasted longer than a year. And with both ex-partners immediately ending up in a relationship with someone else, due to this I'd already developed some significant insecurities regarding my body image and personality, wondering why I was rarely able to attract anyone. For the most part I had overcome this prior to our relationship. My ex-partner and I were together for a year before she suddenly broke up with me out of the blue. Our relationship seemed perfectly healthy at that stage. We'd been through some issues with trust in the earlier stages, but had seemingly worked through them. We had only recently returned from a holiday trip with one another where we had plenty of fun, great SX and awesome dates. It came as a complete shock to me. She claimed I had been a fantastic boyfriend and that I had done nothing wrong, but that she just couldn't love me and felt like she'd be lying if she said she did. This seemed very sudden and something didn't seem right. Initially, I tried to just cope as healthily as I could, but during post-breakup discussions, I noticed that she had become very hesitant to talk about what she was doing with her spare time dancing around certain topics. I had access to her Google, Facebook account. Ashamedly, I logged in and I found out that she'd been sleeping at another guy's house while we were together and had seemingly left me for him. I confronted her and she tried to claim that she'd only started sleeping with him after our breakup and everything prior was babysitting. At the time, I fell for the lie and felt terrible. Over the next couple of days, I started to question the legitimacy of her claims and uncovered that she'd been lying about going to bed early, doing cores at home and using affirming loving language to keep me off her tracks during those times she was with him. 
I tried to contact her about this, but she never responded. I started losing my mind trying to figure out what was going on and what was real and a few days later I went to each of their properties. I guess I wanted to see them together in the flesh to try and accept the reality of the situation. I achieved that but I was also caught, interrogated by the app, and trespassed from both properties. Visiting their properties is something I am most definitely not proud of. The app has a significantly more built frame than me, a much more masculine personality. I believe he is a truck driver, smoker, drinker, and had threatened that he would have beaten me down if he was not in his work uniform. Understandable given the circumstances, I guess the reason I mention this is I've never been involved in fights or instigating violence. I've always attempted to resolve things via communication and mediation. A couple weeks later I reached out again via text message expressing my heartbreak and confusion about how this other person had come along and how my ex-partner was comfortable with her actions after supposedly having suffered significantly after being cheated on by her ex-fiancé prior to our relationship. Once again, I received no response. A few weeks later I was in their neighborhood. I drove past the app's house and saw her car parked on the street. I became overwhelmed with anger and frustration of being betrayed. Lied to. Gaslit, abandoned and replaced and I keyed her driver's door. This is also something I am not proud of. I immediately regretted my actions. A month later I saw that they had become official on social media. I sent her another message expressing my heartbreak. How I was struggling to function with all confusion as to how everything had come about. And how quickly they had become social media official. She ignored this message. Two days later the police arrived at my door. I was served a protection order with the claim that I was psychologically abusing her and I was court-ordered to attend a non-violence program. In her affidavit, she carefully avoided any mention of her time spent with App prior to our breakup, and also claimed relationship with this person was nothing more than a platonic friendship. Fast forward a few months and I tried to counter the protection order and court-ordered non-violence program. After a blunder from my lawyer, I accidentally agreed to attending the non-violence program in the heat of the moment during a pre-hearing negotiations court session, not fully understanding what the judge was suggesting. This resulted in the court hearing to discuss the necessity of her protection order becoming permanent being adjourned for six months while I attend the course, during which she would have been cross-examined and her lies exposed. My career has suffered significantly from my inability to function in day-to-day -day life. I was often unable to show up on time, or at awesome days, yet alone perform consistently. I've lost all my savings for missed time at work and unpaid leave. I've ended up $10,000 in debt to my lawyer, ultimately for no result. I've struggled with extreme depression, anxiety, intrusive memories and ruminations, leading to self-deletion thoughts and eventually being admitted to the psych ward at hospital under the Mental Health Act and being away work for months on end with unpaid leave. I've only recently returned to work on reduced hours and three days a week and even now I'm still struggling significantly every day. I'm constantly tortured by memories of her and intrusive thoughts about her and the new partner, along with endless comparisons wondering what is wrong with me, better about him, and scenarios about what would have happened if I had realized what was going on earlier, or acted differently, all the while my ex-partner appears more than content, and happy in life, continuing to enjoy holiday trips, a functioning day-to-day -day life, and fulfilled with her new partner she shows off on social media. Read her comment, it seems you are like obsessed with her and closure. Never ask questions to a cheater about why. If you research enough, you will find three answer per question and they are valid. Original poster, I'm not actively choosing to be obsessed, but I am aware that my intrusive thoughts revolve around understanding and closure. Quite frankly, I wish I could just leave it behind at this point and not think about her or him. For me it feels like poison in my mind. It seeps in and drags me down when I don't want to be thinking about these things. Through this I've definitely learned that nothing she could ever say would truly bring me closure. I wouldn't believe a word coming out of her mouth even if she did have the decency to communicate. I've done plenty of research in the time since this all happened. It's been helpful for the most part to mitigate my confusion and queries, but I often struggle to find long-term validation or closure from those results before I begin questioning them or thinking about them in different perspectives and undermining them. I've been trying to seek professional support via a psychologist for months now with little luck. Reader comment, that is not normal behavior. You would benefit from long-term therapy. There was a lot of obsessive compulsive behaviors there. Sounds like it was already not that great of a relationship if it lasted barely a year and she kept it casual for half of it. You really need to see a therapist long term. You're obsessed over a person who just isn't worth it. 
Her life will be full of drama and bad relationships. You need to turn a corner in your own and stop obsessing so much. Original poster, I am well aware. With my experiences, I believe I've developed some pretty serious abandonment issues. I don't know if casual is the right word. At the time, it was more like it was a secret. We discussed things like monogamy and ended up with the explanation of mutually exclusively dating. Everything we did was as a couple just without initially using the title girlfriend and boyfriend. In hindsight, it's a bit effed up. I've been trying to seek professional support from a psychologist for months since this all went down with little luck. Story 3. Girlfriend has crossed my relationship boundaries for the last time by messaging guys. But I think we still love each other but I can't stay with her and still have respect for myself. I have been dating this girl for almost 4 years now and really saw a future together with her. And we talked about marriage, our love, kids, owning a house etc often. However around 5 months ago my friend who has a reputation for being a player kept hitting on her subtly, jokingly and constantly texting her. Not wanting to be overly protective or come off as insecure and jealous I did say to her if he ever makes her uncomfortable to let me know. And that he can often cross boundaries with others but it's okay for her to have male friends etc about two months of this behavior quite constantly. I was hanging out with him and another friend since the morning and then gaming over discord for a lot of the day. However, I later that night finds out that he had invited my girlfriend to go watch a movie with him and cook dinner together. He never brought this up with me once despite us hanging out all day which was a huge red flag for me given his nature and all the behavior up to this point. I asked her to instead hang out with me, but she said she really wanted to watch the movie. I took the approach at this point of giving her room to fail and to find out WTF was really going on because honestly it will make it easier if she just takes the opportunity and cheats to break it off legitimately and easily. I was very frustrated with my friend but more with my girlfriend for doing this stuff after I had discussed this kind of thing before. Afterward, I let her know that he had never let me know about this and found the behavior of both of them, especially him to cross my boundaries and be incredibly sketchy. She reacted that it was all innocent and they were just friends, etc. etc. Other people I talked to about this such as my friend who we were hanging out with found this to be a betrayal by our friend and that there is no way my girlfriend is that naive to see that as just being friends when he invited her to cook dinner and everything behind my back without including me. This friend had never invited us to do stuff like this and from his flirting toward her in the past it's clear he was trying to establish more and more of a relationship with her. Essentially the outcome of this was that I was no longer friends with this flirty guy and that I decided to believe her that she just wanted a friend etc. She has had problems with making friends and really only has some friends through people she met through me. My flirty friend said that it was all mutual flirting and just innocent playfulness that I should get over and my girlfriend insisted that she was never flirting with him but could see how it looked that way and that going forward she would not contact this guy because of how he betrayed my friendship to get to her romantically. However, this wasn't true as even though we had set a boundary not to contact this guy I saw a message pop up on her laptop from him and she had been confiding in him about how I was just being overprotective and that she still wanted to be friends but wouldn't be able to talk to him as much because she wanted to stay with me. Despite messaging all this to him she would tell me she was uncomfortable with him being around and upset with him for how he disrespected our relationship behind my back etc. After I found this message I confronted her immediately and we had long discussion about everything and about how I didn't want to continue the relationship unless she genuinely had the belief that what he did was wrong. Like I explained to her that if she saw this behavior as okay then that was fine and that we simply have different expectations and boundaries and that I can longer be with her if that's the case. However, she convinced me that she did believe all of this is wrong, and I do legitimately believe even now that she can what happened retrospectively was really f something to keep in mind is that she is incredibly immature emotionally with relationships so I could see how she learned from this. The outcome of this was that she said she would cut contact with him completely and blocked him on Snapchat. I didn't ask her to do any of this mind you. The relationship was steady and great for a while until New Year's where she was having a party at her share house and had invited her two uni girlfriends to visit on that day but her roommate was having a joint party there too so the flirty guy would also be there. I said to her I am do not want to see him and will not be there and you really should not be either. She essentially said that I need to be an adult about it and that even though he will make us uncomfortable that I need to be at that party for her because she can't leave because she invited guests from her uni. Me and my group of friends instead decided to have a party at mine without this guy who we mostly have discarded after his behavior. For context here I asked people to make their own decisions about this and never exiled him. 
So, on the New Year's party, I invited her and said she can bring her guests, but she said it would be too complicated and she already planned for them to stay there and decorated for the party, etc., etc. I said, fine then, but you can't expect me to be there with him, and she said, okay, I will avoid him if I see him at my party. We still had a call at midnight New Year's and all seemed well. This was until I randomly, 24 days later, I was watching Netflix on her laptop, saw her Facebook open. Just to confirm that she had not been messaging him, etc., I had a look. And what I found was she messaged the flirty friend to ask whether or not she should EFF this guy at her party and she felt conflicted about it because it would mean saying goodbye to me and my family. From the messages exchanged it seems that she did not go through with the cheating. But I find this is a deal breaker at this point. She cannot say she loves me but then also consider cheating on me because I wasn't with her for one party. For the sake of argument let's accept that nothing happened. And she didn't cheat. She still flirted with this other guy as she knows he was down to EFF and in Keen and she messaged and continued to emotionally confide in the original flirty guy. I confronted her about this and she said that since that day she has been rock solid with me and knows all of that with flirty guy and party guy was wrong and that's why she hasn't messaged flirty guy since then 24 days ago and didn't cheat on me. I think it will be impossible for me to maintain any respect for myself if I continue this relationship even if I do truly believe we have love for each other. These actions or even inactions have crossed the same boundary of not flirting with others for the last time I think and I only found out about it because I snooped. I don't know what to do at this point and she says she would do anything for us and she was just being stupid etc. For some context we never had any other problems in our relationship before and have a good time together always and have a great sx life generally. Looking for your perspectives on this. TLDR. Girlfriend repeatedly messaged mutual friend who made flirting and dating behavior toward her and after promising me she would no longer do so continued behind my back to confide in him emotionally after saying to me she is done with him. This was exacerbated when she was at a party without me and sent a message to him asking if she should f a guy from the party and that she was down to read her comment um three times if i'm following and she considered cheating because of a party you aren't married living together with kids or complicated finances and no support to help with a split i don't usually just say walk away but i'm not understanding how you stay she clearly has different values and ideas about what is okay and what is not in a relationship what happens when you have bigger issues you get sick or work is hard she was going to cheat because you didn't go to one party. It just seems like you both don't fit well together and have different definitions of what makes a relationship healthy. She has had multiple times to show you and the truth is insanity is doing the same thing but expecting different results. It would suck to learn this again after you sign a lease or have kids together. Edit it to add, to be really honest, that first dinner and a movie would have been my deal breaker. My husband went dating if he went to a flirty friend's of mine house for dinner and a movie without me on an invite like that which was clearly behind my back and he still went after i pointed it out and asked him to spend time with me instead we would be done dating right then friends don't do that and her making that choice that night was disrespectful right then to your relationship and you and it crossed a line he clearly disrespected your friendship and she thinks it's a good choice to start a friendship with someone who treated her boyfriend of several years like that Mum, just no, read her comment. She is sketchy as if this is not even about being emotionally immature. This is her wanting validation from other men. To me, she has already cheated. You have given her numerous chances. Eventually, she is actually going to EFF someone. Then, you'll experience the real heartbreak. Walk away. She goes care about you, your boundaries, or the relationship. All she does is try to placate you during the discussion and then carries on doing what she does. Break up and leave her to the players. You won't have any peace until you do. Loyalty is the bare minimum to ask from a relationship partner. She's not the one. Good luck.